in, sheathed in the breath of the planet, a torrent of shining life, feel its wrath. Ex Calera! Who don't speak weeb, I will explain the reference. But for those of you who got the reference, kudos to you. You get extra cool points. Now, for those of you who don't speak weeb, that is the noble phantasm incantation for Artoria Pendragon, a.k.a. King Arthur, a.k.a. Stable. <laughs> do that, and this podcast gave me an excuse. Like, I have, I've had that thing memorized for years. But I've waited for an excuse to use it. But yeah, greetings, lords and ladies. Welcome to another episode of Channel Chasers. As always, I am your host, Jay of Mr. Jay's Reviews, and joining me, as always, is my friend, my co-host, my squire, Brian Kersey. How are you tonight, Sir Brian? I am doing all right. Uh... All right. So, yeah, uh, if you can't tell by the title and or... We will be covering Netflix's latest original series, Cursed Season 1. which A I... retake on... The reimagine on Arthurian legend created by Frank Miller and I forgot the artist's name. Yeah, I, yeah I'm, just, I was like, I'm blanking on the artist myself. Uh, but yeah, no. Honestly, I could not tell that this was made by Frank. Uh, there was not, a, there was not, a, there were not enough hookers in this. Uh, this is, I could not tell it was made by Frank. Um, Which is funny, though, because he actually had a hand in the yeah, show. Which is, which, is, which is crazy, because, like, to go on a little side tangent before we get into, um, like, the actual show itself, uh, you know, we had heard the announcement of this and that it was based on something created by Frank Miller. And uh, if, you know, if you are anywhere familiar with the comic world or even the movie world, You know that past a certain point, when Frank started wearing a particular hat, he started going a little cuckoo banana pants. And so, uh, Mm -hmm. you know, every time he makes something, everybody's a little skeptical because it's like, is it going to be good, Frank, or is it going to be crazy old man Frank? And also, Frank. And also, there is a. That weird subsection that sometimes it's uh, crazy but enjoyable still, and uh, that's things like the spirit and uh, Sin City. All right, the spirit was kind of a that's enjoyable in a so bad it's good kind of way. Sin City was actually legitimately good. We don't talk about the second one, uh, but yeah, so. This is Cursed. Um, as Brian mentioned, it is a retelling of classic Arthurian legend, which, fun fact for you guys, Arthurian legend is actually probably history's first uh, account of fan fiction. Mm-hmm. Be- because uh, the legend of King Arthur is a very, very ancient uh, Britain legend uh, from way back in the day. And eventually, when the printing press was established, those stories got into circulation and then eventually fell into the hands of a man by the name of Jeffrey of Mormon. And Jeffrey, he liked the stories a lot, but uh, he wanted to spice it up a little bit. And so he added his own original character, Do Not Steal, Lancelot Dulac. And uh, the rest is history from there. It gets passed through a myriad of other writers through the centuries, and each writer adds something new or adds something different, whether it be the Holy Grail, the addition of the Fisher King, the Green Knight, um, all the different knights of the round table and their different relations to each other, the addition of Morgan Le Fay, which is actually relatively new. Uh, It's Mm -hmm. all super interesting stuff. I could honestly do an entire podcast episode just kind of going into Arthurian legend itself. But if you guys are interested, I highly recommend it. checking out the video Breaking Down Arthurian Canon by the YouTube channel Overly Sar- uh, Sarcastic Productions. Love what they do. It's a really good video. It'll definitely like get you up to speed on some of this stuff. Um, but yeah, 
Let's talk about the show. And weird thing enough, though, real quick. Uh, uh-huh. Our three and legend, like, has a weird way of coming back up with in our, like, friend group. Because, of course, Jay mentioned the fate stuff, and uh, him and another friend of ours talk a lot about it. And Jay does, like, Twitch basically dedicated to it. Um, yep. And then... uh. When we were, when we used to have Yu-Gi-Oh battles, my go-to deck was an Arthurian legend-based deck. Yep, the Noble Knights. So it's a pretty solid deck, also, all things considered. Yep, but uh, I used to wreck shit with it. Oh yeah, no, it was it was it was good times, good times. Um, but uh, but yeah, so it's just like Arthurian legend has a weird like reoccurrence it's like almost like you're living in the matrix e type crap but so this came along and it's like yeah we're doing a tv show based on a three legend but it's not gonna star any of the like main knights instead it's going to star nimue yeah, which, who is a super obscure character, by the way. Like, you know, not many people actually, like, know who Nimue is by her actual given name, right? Most people know her by her moniker, the Lady of the Lake. Nobody knows, like, very few people, unless you actually are into Arthurian legend, know what her real name is. Hmm. So, like, that, that was really cool. Like, that was a good selling point for me right off the bat, because I always like... When they uh, they like explore the more obscure characters like Nimue, although they got really fucky with some of this stuff, um, in terms of like how old characters are and yeah, how this timeline works. When we As say someone... when we say reimagine, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, it's cool. When we say reimagine, we mean reimagine. It's like almost. Once upon a time levels of reimagining. <laughs> oh, one hundred percent. Honestly, this this uh, kind of you know. I didn't, wait, hold on. Wait a second. My brain just had a light bulb. Wasn't there a whole arc in Camelot? Oh yeah, and yeah. Uh, and uh, Arthur oh, wow. was and a. Think... But the twist was that Arthur was a villain. Yeah. Mhm. Mhm. But yeah, yeah. So, but to piggyback off of what Brian was saying earlier, yeah, it is like once upon a time levels of reimagining. So anyone who else who is like me and is like an Arthurian legend, like fan, um, you know, you're gonna have a lot of fun seeing uh, uh, like references, but also you're gonna be scratching your head like, wait, that doesn't make any sense. You're supposed to be his mom. Why are you the same age? Yep. It like gets to a point where it's almost like a. Like a CWDC show where it's like, oh, my real name is so and so, and it's like, what? Really? Really? Is it? Is that really you? Are Are you sure your name is Ted Grant? You look like forty years too young. I mean, they. This doesn't spoil anything, but they do have a moment towards the end where it is like a legit like DC show reveal. Thing moment. Yeah, yeah liter- literally at the end, like, yeah, when two characters are running away, it's like, hey, so what's your name? And it's just like, oh, yeah, my name is huge character name drop here. So, yeah, uh, like, be prepared for that if you are a fan of Arthurian Legends. Now, I do want to give a, a bit of a warning to anyone who is, like, either a casual or has no idea what the fuck Arthurian Legend is. Um, you know, I saw prior, right, prior to watching it myself, um, along with Brian, that uh, Cursed was getting, like, mixed reviews. People were not necessarily hating it, but, like, they felt like it was too slow and they couldn't get into it. And I can understand why. Uh, if you're not familiar with Arthurian Legends, it's going to be super fucking dense at times. Mm-hmm. Also, um... Also, this more than, I'd say more than, like, any other fantasy show that we've had so far, 
is uh, focused on acting. Like, mm-hmm. It's a very it's a very talky show, and a lot of people, some people don't like talky shows, and that's understandable. If you're not, if you're one of those people, yeah, this show ain't for you. This show ain't for you. There's a lot of talking. But if you if you like good acting and like um like just like fantasy myth, I wouldn't say like typical fantasy genre stuff, but just like if you like fantasy mythos. But also, and... so real quick, just because I say there's a lot of talking. So, you know, me and Brian both agreed. This show does not do action regularly, but boy, when it does action, it does action. Oh, it it does action where uh, there is legit the first ever action, like, true action scene that we get in the show reminded me of a very specific scene from Game of Thrones. Yeah, it's like, and it's, and you know, it's not like super late in the game either. It's like the, I think it's like the second or third episode when that happened. No, it's the first episode. It happened in the first. Oh, that was in the first episode. Okay, cool. I'll, I'll get to the actual reference when we get to spoilers, but yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, I did. I just want to kind of give that warning to people who haven't watched the show, have probably maybe heard about it, but like have, are kind of like hesitant because maybe they don't know anything about it. Uh, you know, I'm never one of those people that's like you got to do research to enjoy a show. Um, but like I said, just pop on that video from Overly Sarcastic Productions. It's like twenty minutes. Um, uh, you know, you'll get some cliff notes and you'll get some cool, you'll get some cool ideas to like where this could possibly go, and you know where all the swerves are going to happen. Which, uh, by the way, even like you hardcore Arthurian people will not predict some of these twists. Nope, I did. I know I didn't. Uh-oh. Like I, I didn't see some of this coming. Uh, there was there was like stuff there was stuff like there was stuff early on where I'm like, oh yeah, I should have saw that coming. Just just, just get, judging by my TV brain, but I wasn't thinking with TV brain. I was thinking with, oh yeah, so this is how the legend goes. So it's probably gonna go like this. Nah, not really. Yeah, they like um, swerve on you a lot yeah, with the show. Definitely. Um. Also, I feel like you know this is a weird this is a weird frame of reference. But anybody who is Merlin back in the day, I think you'll enjoy this a lot. Uh, that was one of my favorite shows as a kid and, like, early teenager. I don't know if you ever watched it, Brian. Um, that's actually where I first saw Katie McGrath. She was it's Morgana one of those one. shows that I've been meaning to see. I know of clips of it, but yeah. I never actually watched it proper. Yeah, Katie McGrath is uh, Morgana in that one, and... Uh, you know, she doesn't have to do an American accent, so it's like, you know, <laughs> you don't have to hear her break every two, three words. Yeah, I've heard that. Um, I think that was one of her first big major roles. Um, yeah. It's a, it's, a, it's a really good show. Uh, also, like, you know, uh, the effects are really good for its time. And speaking of effects, man, like, you know, this, again, this is a show that doesn't use effects that often. But when they use effects, it's really fucking good. Uh, one of the mm-hmm. coolest things that they do is uh, scene transitions. When they do these scene transitions, it switches to this like almost like oil pastel type of thing. And when they like it's parchment, mostly, like yeah. parchment art, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it's mostly when they move from like location to location. Uh, and I think that's smart because like it erases the like Game of Thrones problem that they had in later seasons. <laughs> Where, like, you know, in the beginning seasons, you actually saw that it took, like, days and weeks, maybe even months for them to fa- uh, to travel to places. And then, like, in later seasons, they just seemed like they invented fast travel all of a sudden. <laughs> like, you had checkpoints and you could just teleport. But, you know, uh, like, with those scene transitions, it kind of eliminates that problem. Like, that, that yeah, you don't think, you're not thinking about that as you're watching. Um so yeah. I think that was a cool that was a cool way to like go around that. Um, Indeed, so yeah. it also makes it also helps to make it different from Game of Thrones, mm-hmm. like just in your mind and all, like in general. Yep. And also, one other thing that we can talk about real quick before the before spoilers is audio. The music in this show It's pretty amazing. Yeah, one hundred percent. Which, uh, oddly enough. Um, Oh, 
What was I gonna say? Uh, it's uh... oddly enough, soundtrack audio. Yeah. Um, the guy who does the audio. He he has a very familiar last name, but um, sorry, mind farting here. Uh, I hate it when that happens because I've been wanting to bring this up for like hours now because I was watching the show mm -hmm. today of recording. Mm -hmm. Um, but oh, Russo, yeah, oh, the guy's oh, last he... name. Is is Russo. It's but he's his not name. one of but he's not one of the Russos. No, he's or actually, is he? No. He's actually uh one of the two founding members of the rock band Tonic. Never heard of him. But cool. But uh yeah he's provided uh audio he's the composer on several things like Fargo, Picard Yo, Fargo Legion. had some great music. Fargo and Far anything Noah Howley does had like yeah, great music. So yeah, that's pretty dope. Um, yep. But yeah, so we've spent kind of fifteen or so minutes. I uh, kind of just prepping you guys, letting you know like kind of the feel of the show. If that's convinced you enough, go watch it. It's ten episodes. I guarantee you, you won't regret it. If you are a fantasy fan, an Arthurian fan, or a fan of Catherine Langford and Good acting. Yeah, because we didn't mention that, but yeah, it stars her, and it's got a lot of good acting, including a third Skarsgård brother. Yeah, which I like. I had completely forgot that like he was uh, like he was in this, and then like Brian was like, "Yeah, the third Skarsgård brother is this character," and I was like, "Really?" And then I look at him, and I'm like, "Oh, it's Floki, duh." So yeah, if you watch Vikings, which by the way, also, I know there are a lot of like Game of Thrones versus Vikings people. If you like Vikings, I think you'll like this more than you would like Game of Thrones. Because it definitely has more of a Vikings vibe to it than a Game of Thrones vibe to it. Game From of what Thrones I know definitely... of Vikings, I agree. Yeah. Even to the fact where there's a very specific thing that makes it like Vikings. Because like there's, there's, the, so the reason I say that besides the fact that like, you know, actual vikings do exist in this world like that's not a spoiler that's just kind of geography you know medieval england vikings duh uh but yeah um aside from the fact that actual vikings exist in this world um the thing that i think makes it very vikings like is that unlike game of thrones which uh leans more into the fantasy uh this tends to lean more towards like grim and gritty battles with fantasy sprinkled in here so I think that's pretty cool. Which I think was the appeal of, like, early Game of Thrones. And then when they started to lean more towards the, into the fantasy, that's when all the bullshit started happening. Um, but mm -hmm. yeah. Um, so that should be more than enough to either convince you to either check it out or skip it. If you do check it out, leave a comment in the show notes or the YouTube comments. Uh, if we can remember, if I can remember to tell Brian when the audio is in Dropbox this time and you know, we can post it at a proper time. Um, but yeah, um, so that's your spoiler warning in case you didn't realize it. Now we're going to actually go into spoilers. All right, Brian, let's start off with uh, some of the fucky shit. So, yeah, it's, I got to say, man, like I told you in our chat, it was weird with all the age screwing that was going on. Um Mm-hmm. Because I was like, okay, this will be interesting. I was like, okay, Nimue is a young adult here. So I know Arthur is listed as a character. And we already knew about that. So I was like, okay, that's cool. Because Arthur is supposed to be the oldest anyway, um, along with, like, maybe, like, Arthur and Lancelot are round table night. The others are, like, kids that eventually join up when Arthur is, like, a grown-ass man. So I'm like, okay, that makes sense. But then we get we get some shit like fucking. We get like Nimue is here, and I'm and you know we know Arthur's there, and but I'm like, okay, so that means if Nimue is a teenager, 
Like, or at least, like, late teens, early 20s. I mean, Lancelot's got to be, like, a little kid. Because Lancelot is, like, her son. Not biologically. Um, her, not Because Lancelot's parents get murdered uh, when he's, like, a baby. And Nimue takes him in uh, to protect him because her lake is right near the castle. So technically, her lake falls in the domain of the kingdom. But yeah, so I'm like, okay, Lancelot's going to be a little kid. And then in Saunters, the weeping monk, and I'm like, wait a minute, wait a fucking minute. You're Lancelot. Okay, this is confusing now. And uh, I don't, he definitely looks older. I yeah. don't know by much. Oh, but... yeah. Oh, yeah, he's at least a few years older than... Um, like but he Nimue definitely is Arthur. taller than her by at least a foot. Well, yeah, he's de- he looks older. He looks older, like, at least by a couple of years. Um, yeah. Which, I, which was weird to me. And also, like, some of the... I mean, granted, again, some of these changes are more modern changes, which is why I'm more familiar with these. But, like, uh, characters like Gawain. Um, like, Gawain is supposed to be the eldest son of Morgana Pendragon. Morgana, obviously, is near the same age as Arthur. Gwen shows up, and is about the same age as the three of them, and I'm just like, alright, okay, I guess that's not happening. Which is but, weird, I mean, though, because originally I thought another character was going to be Gwen, and I was preparing myself mentally for that, and then when we found out that he wasn't, I was like, okay, and then Gwen and goes and hugs him, and is like, what? Yeah, I was confused. And then, like, he starts being a dickhead for the beginning of his introduction, and I'm just like, oh, no, Wayne. You're supposed to be cool. And then also to make the age thing, like, weirder, at one point, Arthur is getting jealous of their connection, so he's like, are you a romantic rival? Are you a rival or a brother? And And he's like... And he's like, dude... Uh, when I left, she was a little girl. She's like a little sister to me. You can marry her twice for all I care. And it's just like, uh, little sister. Okay, age difference kind of thing. Yeah, super weird. Um, I mean, like, the Morgana having children thing was kind of like already thrown out the window when we discovered that she was gay or bi. Well, I mean, I guess it's not thrown out of the window if she's bi, but it's like we've only seen her. Well, with they've a girl. never. She's never ex. At least as far as we know, she's never expressed interest in a guy. Period. Yeah, so we so we're pretty sure she's gay, um, which you know, cool. But I was like, okay, so that means that like you know, um, that explains why Gwen is a whole separate ass character, um, and that means. That the twins and Mordred and Agravain are probably going to be separate ass characters. Um, so that was so that's interesting. And then also to like redo the age thing to go back on the whole kids thing. Squirrel. So squirrel actually makes the most sense because I know, but it's just like yeah. squirrel. Squirrel being that age when everybody else is. Yeah, I mean, but but it also makes the most sense because Squirrel is, he he was a junior knight. He came to the round table at the same time as Galahad, who is Lancelot's son. He's like, they're both like, essentially, like, think of like Galahad and Percival as like the, the, the Gen 2 Robins, right? Or like, yeah. you know, like like a legacy. So he made the most sense, but it still was like, oh, cool, you're personal. That's dope. Which I hate to say this, but I uh, accidentally got that spoiled for me by looking at the wiki. Oh, gotcha. That's cool. No, but like that that was pretty cool, and it makes a lot of sense because Percival actually was Lancelot's flyer. And, um, like, half-brother, half-younger brother. So, like, where they end up uh, at the uh, at the end of the season makes a lot of sense. Which, uh, if you know Arthurian legend, you knew that that was Lancelot. But um, they even gave you 
several like obvious hints if you didn't get it right away like like in the final fight where he uses two swords yep and it's like hey they kept that Lancelot yeah I, I was like oh that's cool yeah I was like oh right, okay now they're making it obvious yep this makes sense and then, and then at the end they do a DCCWS moment where it's like well, what's your name yeah, because basically Lancelot was giving Percival shit because Percival has been going by Squirrel this entire time and, you know, he never answered to anything else until Gwen actually referred to him by his first name. And that's when we were like, first like, oh, you're Percival. Cool. He did it as like a moment of like stop. Manhood. Yeah, of like manhood. You're not, you're not a boy anymore. Squirrel is a boy. I need you to be a man. You're Percival now. And also to just show how, like how serious the moment is. Yeah, but uh, yeah, so like, so, he, you know, Lancelot's giving him shit, like, you know, Squirrel's an animal's name. What was the name you were given? He goes, fine, it's Percival. He goes, okay, Percival, nice to meet you. And then it's just like, uh, okay, and what's your name? What's your God-given name? And he goes, Lancelot. A long time ago, I was called Lancelot. I was like, really? <laughs> okay, that's, that's how we're going to reveal it. <laughs> nice, I guess. That was kind of anti-climactic. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, but, but, yeah, no, I, I think it was cool uh, making the Lancelot, like, an, antagon- an antagonistic force all throughout the show because uh, it gives him that, like, redemption arc, which also makes his later, you know, fall, you know, if, it get- if the show gets that deep, yeah. it will make his later fall that much more tragic. Unless, well, because they gave him gave him this dark thing to begin with, this might be different than the other Lancelot that we all yeah, know who... Yeah, because I, I have a feeling that what they're doing is they're flipping the script and just yeah, doing yeah, a yeah. reverse. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're getting, the, yeah, they're getting the... They're making him bad to begin with and then, like, redeeming him instead of making him, like, the best guy ever and then turning him into a, you know, uh, NTR fan. Yeah, how could this happen to me? Oh, man. But, like, yeah, I, I, I don't think that's smart. I think that's smart. It's a good way to go with Lancelot. Because, like him, uh, like I said before, Lancelot actually is one of history's first um, instances of a uh, Gary Stu character. Mm-hmm. Um, a self-insert uh totally original character do not feel um which also um i just want to say real quick i don't know if this is me or not but from this version of lancelot do you almost kind of get a hey christensen oh 100 percent. i was waiting for him to say something about like, Anakin? Grass. i was i was waiting for him to say something about grass or like or something along the lines. <laughs> but it's just like at least visually he and then oh, yeah. his like darkness, like Oh yeah. I, I actually really like what they did with the makeup and like how he like his like his um you know, his mascara kinda looked like tears, you know, they call him the weeping monk. Mm-hmm. I thought that was pretty that was a pretty that was a pretty cool visual. Mm-hmm. And then we find out through Gwaine that's like a symbol of his people. Yep. Which I like. I I was speculating on ever since uh, like they revealed his like uh, well they revealed his alias the weeping monk and I was like okay Lancelot's the weeping monk so that's Lancelot I was like okay but wait a minute Lancelot is like a fairy dude that's the whole reason Nimue took him in because Nimue was his aunt. And I was like, so is he a fairy? And then it was like, so he's probably, I was like, okay, so it's probably like a self-hatred type of thing. And lo and behold, that was the arc. So that was pretty cool. He is a fae, but he is a fae of a distant, uh, like, forgotten race. Yeah, like like a a forgotten kingdom. Like, because... The Ash Because Merlin even talks about it, right? That, like, you know, when humans started to you know invade fey lands the fey had to take different territories 
forests, the mountains, the swamps, the ashlands, different things like that. Um, so mm-hmm. like it makes it makes a lot of sense. Um, and Nimue but, herself, who is part of the Skyborn. Yep, which is really cool. I think that was pretty. That was an interesting twist. And again, it makes Lancelot's character very complex, and uh, you know, kind of that like mm-hmm. tragic hero character, which I think will make it very interesting. And um, I think it'll make his bond with Arthur that much more satisfying because, like, you know, anybody who knows Arthurian legend, even within passing, knows that Lancelot and Arthur are best friends. Which is why him doing was so painful. Um, uh, So, yeah, I think that's going to be really, really interesting. Because we already saw that, uh, like, the development of the Arthur Gwen uh, bro ship, and Gwen is Arthur's most loyal knight, besides maybe Bedivere. But, like, out of the strong knights, Gwen and Lancelot were, like, kind of neck and neck for the number two. Uh, so, mm-hmm. like, I think it was cool that we already, like, early established that Gwen and Arthur have that brotherhood. Yep, and uh, and like Gwen also has a brotherhood with Lancelot. He d- still felt for him the entire time, and honestly, it was it, it was Gwen that really kind of reawakened that part of Lancelot, you know, you know, to himself. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I thought that was, was cool. And it was also the whole fact of like little Squirrel, because I'm going to continue to call him Squirrel because he prefers Squirrel. Yeah, Squirrel. Yeah, Squirrel was like yeah, because I because you know um. Clearly, Lancelot saw a lot of Squirrel in himself, or a lot of himself in Squirrel, and so yeah. like he, that, that was what really woke him up because he's like, "This happened to me before. I can't let this happen again." Um, yeah, especially with uh, the cook, which oh, 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 dude, he was terrifying. He was terrifying. I'm pretty the sure moment, I, I've seen that uh, actor in something else, but yeah. The moment when Squirrel was like, "I'll oh, get out your fucking eyes out," he just looks at him too late, and I'm just like, "Oh shit!" Yeah, and uh, he's like, you know, I call these the fingers of the angels. Yeah, yeah, these, I call these God's fingers. I named each of them after one of God's archangels. And I'm just like, "Oh yeah. shit!" Oh, and God's serious. fingers, and us uh, starting with Azriel, and he started with Michael. Uh, oh yeah, that's right, Michael. He sorry, with Michael. Michael and Michael tells the truth. Shines so bright, even I can see it. Yep. And you which, will see the truth, and you will which, tell the truth. You know, it... anyone who like did not grow up Catholic or you went regularly to Sunday school and do not know uh, any of your Judeo-Christian mythology, uh, he's actually telling. He was actually speaking the truth there. Uh, Michael is. The, the archangel of war, but he is the archangel of truth, and the reason he shines so bright is because he is the twin brother of one Samael, a.k.a. Mm-hmm. the Lightbringer, a.k.a. Mm-hmm. Lucifer. Which, um... So excited anything... for that. So excited but, for that. Future yeah. podcast plans. Uh, but I just wanted to bring that up, because I which, was, uh, by the way, a cool reference. Which, by the way... A quick little side note, like, ties it into it. Uh, the composer for this did uh, Lucifer Season 2 to now. Oh, that's cool. Um, but yeah, so uh, he was pretty intimidating. Uh, loved all of that. Um, yeah. He... Uh, one... My bad, go ahead. I was just going to say, yeah, he was. And to find out that he, like, sewed his eyes shut... Yeah. But but they didn't, like, obviously, like, say, oh, he sewed his eyes shut and, like, I love that, yeah, be cause, menaced. Cause, yeah, because Squirrel, yeah, because Squirrel calls him out on it. Um, and I thought that was a really cool moment for Squirrel. Um, but going back to this religious order, right? Um, I hate that in every medieval thing, Catholics are, lo- are like, are made to be the bad guys. Um, but anyway. <laughs> the... I digress. Um, Which, uh, by the way, uh, I just thought about this. Uh, who else? Who else? It's Catholic and loves the color red. Yeah, Daredevil. 
Yeah. Yep. I but, mean, but yeah, like, uh, but uh, but as to, back to what I was saying, uh, one thing that I did not like about uh, about the show, this is more of just not even a complaint towards the show. This is just me being a fantasy nerd. Um, I did not, and you know, Brian also like called this mm-hmm. out as well, and I, uh, and like I was like, okay, so it's not just me. Um, Their the, name, the really yeah, the religious order, the like the the Catholic fighting force of the church that like directly answers to the Pope. They don't just why I don't know why they didn't just call themselves Crusaders like anybody fucking else, but they decided to call themselves Red Paladins. Now, granted, there are divisions of the Crusaders that were Paladins. Um, and they also did some pretty messed up stuff, but like, it just didn't feel like they should have called themselves paladins, especially because most of them didn't even use swords. They were using like very, they were very fightery, and I was like, "That's monk. That's monk. One hundred percent monk." Mm-hmm. They were using crossbows, and uh, not none of them. I will say this from like a fantasy, like nerd standpoint none of them used magic and none or, of them yeah. wore armor yeah none of them wore armor they were all in robes and like no one used any kind of like sacraments or like blessings no we know magic exists in this world man like so why did no one lay on hands if you're fucking paladin but again that's well, just it, a, well that's apparently just, in this world Magic, just in general, is the devil's work. Yep. But yeah, and so. They, all Fey kind, need to be cleansed. Yeah, and uh, th- that's their whole agenda is to basically exterminate all the Fey. Um, so, yay! <laughs> Once again, Catholics are portrayed as bigots and racists. Great. Uh-huh. Which it, it definitely didn't help with that analogy. With the fact that a couple times they said that a couple of the fae were passing. Yep. And could pass as human. Yeah, pass as human. Yeah, hated that. Hated that. Uh, that but yeah. kind of made some awkward real life analogies. That was some, uh, yeah, that was definitely uh, some rough parts. Uh, I mean, their, their group is kind of your stereotypical fantasy bad guy. Honestly, they were kind of boring. Um, to be honest with you, like I was definitely more interested even in crazy ass Uther and the Ice King. The Ice King is really fucking interesting. Um, yeah, and I also know that actor too. He looks familiar. Yeah, I'll, so I'll get to him in a second because uh, he is actually a part of Arthurian lore. Um, no, I'm saying the actor. Well, well yeah, I, yeah. I, know, I know, I know the actor, but I'm, I'm talking about like the character. So. Real quick, uh, so do you have anything more to say on the religious order, uh, the Red Paladin? Uh, just, just, I they kept pump, one thing, two of two things. One of them is uh, they kept pumping up their leader, like the Pope or whatever. Oh, you talking about Father Cardinal? No, the they're like actual leader, like oh, yeah, the Pope. leader. Yeah, yeah, the Pope. We saw that. We only saw the Pope but, at the end. But we see him at the end, and I thought he was going to be, like, a recognizable actor or something, so that he'd be, like, a big bad for season two or something. And no, he's just some random bloke. You know, who, the... you know, who, you know who I thought they were going to get? Who? I thought they were going to get uh, Price. What the fuck is his name? A uh, homie from Game of Thrones who was the High Sparrow. <laughs> he, because he just seems very Pope-like. I don't know, he just feels like he would fit. Yeah, he would have, but but also uh, the like bigger bad which we send out than be like the big bad for season two is the Trinity. Yeah, which is like the elite guard of the paladins who are actual paladins because they wear armor and mask and use swords and shit. Mm-hmm. Which. Uh, I know you said that you wanted to get to uh, the. You wanted to get to the actual guy there, the Nordic guy, but uh, 
the Trinity also ties into another creepy yeah, 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 to Iris, Iris. So, villain. so yeah, let, let's quickly talk about Iris. She's kind of a minor antagonist as well. So we don't know the entire deal about Iris, but Iris is obsessed with becoming a red paladin, and um, it seems as though she is possessed. Because there were a couple scenes where she kind of wanted to resist doing what she was doing. And then, like, some other force within her, like, made her burn herself and do other crazy shit. And, like, tell her to kill Nim away, different things like that. So, we yeah. don't know if Iris isn't 100% in control of what she's doing. But Iris is definitely going to be a problem. Yeah, she, like, kept hitting herself, and, uh, as you could see, the show went on, her skills got better and better. Yeah, she, and... she was kind of, like, evil Arya. Yeah. Like, I, that's, that's what I was thinking this entire time. Which, the sad part is, is, you know how she learned how to use a bow and arrow, right? Yeah, with Squirrel. Yeah. Poor fucking Squirrel. Yo, know, it's gonna be, re- I really hope they don't do this. I hope they don't have, like, a for the watch moment, and she ends up shooting Squirrel. That would suck. I would be so yeah. pissed. But I feel like I feel like as the show has gone on now, um, they have given her a personal vendetta against not only Nimue but also Merlin. Yeah, for sure. Because. Uh, Mer- yeah, because Merlin murked all those like red paladins, like when she was. Well, also, you know, uh, he tried to murk her, and she survived. Yeah, yeah. Also, 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 um, I think uh, the reason Iris exists is to be kind of like um, Squirrel's boss, like a Squirrel's big, kind of, right? Because like you know the the red paladins were the ones that fucked up Gwen, and you know presumably killed him, quote-unquote. We'll get to that later. Um, and so, of course, um, both Lancelot and Squirrel have beef with the Red Paladins. But also, like you said, Iris uh, like learned some stuff from Squirrel. And Squirrel kind of like begrudgingly considered her a friend-esque. So, like, I, I definitely think uh, like Squirrel is going to that is going to be Squirrel's main bad guy. Maybe, but he's going to have to learn some more skills from his buddy. Uh, yeah, and I mean, so is she. Like that, That's what I think. I think they're going to like have like a parallel journey. Well, she's thing. already a, full, a full-fledged a full Trinity member. Yeah, and also, but, you know, uh, thanks to Gwen, technically, on a te- technically, Squirrel is a full-fledged because oh, he was yeah. knighted. True, true. That that's you're right. That's true. Also, I gotta wonder: Does Squirrel maybe have some magic in him? I mean, he's fae blooded, so yeah, yeah. But uh, just like another question, another character. I wonder if we'll ever get to see them use magic because they're fae blooded. But we'll talk about that later because now we also- need to go. But real, real quick, uh, I, I do want to address one character that like showed up very early on that I was very upset that they had to do this to, because he's one of my favorite characters in the Arthurian legend. They did my boy Bors dirty. <laughs> I like Bors, man. He was he, so for frame of reference for anyone who does not know Arthurian legend, Bors is kind of like Volstag if you know the Warriors Three from Marvel Comics. He's like the big guy, like. Very rotund, very jolly. He's always having fun, getting the younger guys drunk. He's the one that like initiates the younger knights. So cool, dude! They turned him into such an asshole. I was so mad. Which one is he in the show? Bors. You don't remember they mentioned Bors? He was the guy who tried to like in the. When Ar- when she first met Arthur, the dude with the dice, that was Bors. Oh shit! Yeah, they did him dirty. Yeah, man. Like Arthur, when Arthur said that's enough Bors, I was like, wait, Bors? No, Bors was trying to rape Nimue. No, Bors, that's not you. That ain't you, man. 
What did they do to you? I blame you, Frank. That's on you. It's on you, buddy. I like him, dude. I like him. Uh, but I did not like him here. Uh, but yeah, let's move on. Uh, I want to talk quickly talk about the, the Ice Nordic King. King. King Cumber, mm-hmm. who is, in Arthurian legend, actually the, uh, like, Uther's half-brother in Arthurian legend, and he's actually the um, the husband of Yvain, who is Morgana's mother and Arthur's mother, but uh, in Arthurian legend, what uh, Uther does for a few Yvain to Uther. Uther has Merlin shapeshift him into Cumber, and uh, he does some things, and that's how Arthur is born. Hmm. Uh, well, oddly enough, though, uh, we do find out uh, in a spoilery section that uh, in the show, Cumber isn't the brother to Arthur. What? So, so he's he's supposed to be, he's supposed to be the half brother to Uther, yeah, yeah. But yeah, but he is said to be the true heir to House Pendragon, which makes sense because he is, like, yeah. He, he so I, I he I, is the I uh, thought that was pretty awesome. He is the brother to the stillborn Pendragon. Yep. Which, you know, that I have a theory about that. I have a theory about that, uh, which we will so we'll talk about later. Because, uh, you know, I, I've been thinking about this for a while, but we'll, we'll get to that when we talk about uh, a certain character. And I'll, we'll, it'll, it'll be obvious when we get to them. Um, but yeah, so uh, Cumber is really cool. Um, he brings in the element of the North, of the Northmen. You know the uh, the people of the Iceland, aka the motherfucking Vikings. Mm-hmm. And yo, <laughs> when the Vikings show up, they do not fuck around. Oh, Vikings go so hard, yo, like for real. Oh man, that was when the action really picks up. I also really like his shady daughter, uh, but I really like her in the sense that I really want to see her die. Like, she feels like one of those characters that's going to be real satisfying when she finally gets to kick the bucket. Oh, yeah, indeed. Um, but, yeah, so moving on from Cumber, let's actually go ahead and talk about Uther. Uther was weird. Yeah. Uther was real weird. So, um, as Brian said, uh, you know, we find out uh, pretty in like the midway point that Uther is not a true Pendray. We find out that like there was a whole like baby switcheroo deal because uh, the queen had a stillborn, and so she needed an actual baby to stay in power. Otherwise, Cumber would be the next lord of uh, well, it's not technically Camelot. I guess it would just be England or. Um, but yeah, so in order to avoid that, she basically pays a peasant girl for her baby, um, and then, like, kills her so that she doesn't go snitching on people, and then, like, the midwife, seeing this happen, gets the fuck out of there, and, like, you know, eventually, Merlin and Cumber, like, use said midwife to basically expose uh, Uther for the fake that he is. And also, Uther has this weird quirk where he, like, does not refer to himself as one person. He always talks in, like, we, our type of shit, and it's weird. I don't know what's going on. Like, is he possessed by something, too, or is he just weird? I don't know, because, um... Is he, like, not, like, like, I'm not gonna say, like, is he, like he's non-binary or something, but, like, that's the only other time I've ever heard somebody... Like refer to themselves like that. This is their like non-binary. Yeah, but I've even with that though. Um, I may be 
neglectful because I will openly admit that I don't know everything about it. But I don't think there is a thing where they say we. Uh, I mean, like uh, in Shira, in Shira, they do, uh, Shira, what can we call it? Uh, Double Trouble does that. Double Trouble the says we. Yeah. Oh. We our. Mm-hmm. So uh, maybe it's an asexual thing, or I mean, a gender. Ase- a- I was I was gonna say a- asexual has nothing to do with. Yeah, gender. I know, I, I know, good. dude. I misspoke. I I know yeah. the difference. That's what I'm saying. It's, 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 it it might be a non-binary thing, but there's no there is there, no in no indication of that. So I'm not gonna just jump and say that's what it is. But it's just it was weird. It was weird. That's it, why I was it like, was he a has, weird he, little tick. But yeah, you know, he, like, is he possessed by something? I was like, that was my whole thing. In the beginning, I thought they were gonna redeem him, like he'd have a redeeming thing. But I knew he just kept getting worse and worse. Yeah, he he kind of Joffrey esque. Yeah, but, although uh, he kind of one upped Joffrey. In a sense, did something oh, yeah? that a lot of people wish that Joffrey would have done. Go ahead, keep going. Uh, matricide. Oh yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, fuck her. I, I was actually I, I, that was the one time I was like, okay, Uther, you actually did a good job. And I like I like the poetic justice of that death too. That was that was pretty well done. Um, but yeah, so that's Uther. He was weird. Um, yeah, and the fact that, uh, like, he just, like, especially after his mom died, he just became more chaotic. Yeah. Like, um, like, uh, when, when the show first started, uh, this is another, like, super geeky reference, but, uh, I'd say that uh, when the show started, it seemed like Uther was um, neutral. But by yeah, the time yeah, that we yeah, end like things... Pure neutral. Mm-hmm. He, chaotic evil. Yeah. Full-on chaotic evil. Yeah, no, I definitely I definitely felt that. I mean, I, but I also did like his relationship with Merlin. Like, he really did feel like Merlin was like a father figure. And Merlin done fucked up <laughs> with his word choice. And that's what ended up getting him stabby stabbed. And then also the whole like, is this another one of Merlin's tricks? Yep. But yeah, so that was Uther. He was weird. Now let's get back to our boy Gawain real quick. Uh, so I love what they did with Gawain. At first I was like, oh no, please don't tell me they're doing this with Gawain. Don't make Gawain a dickhead. Oh, don't make Gwen part of a love triangle. Nope. Nope. He's a good dude. He's great. Um, he's to, He just happens to be a little bit, um, I don't know what the word is for it. Uh, racist? Yeah, he's definitely a little speciesist for sure. Uh, Against but humans? I mean, he has a right to be considering everything that humans have done to him. But like, yeah, yeah he, he's learning. He's learning. I think his friendship with Arthur was that. But yeah, Gwen's pretty fucking great. Um, I do love that they combined him and the Green Knight uh, into one character. Because um, uh, he actually learns from the Green, the Green Knight with his mentor. Uh, and I guess, like, so him taking the mantle makes a lot of sense. Um, Which also, but, by the way, mm-hmm. loved his helmet. Yeah, it was pretty fucking awesome. Um, Which, that's a very, uh, by the by the way, that's just a very wrote... accurate representation of the Green Knight helm from the actual legend. I thought that was really nice. Mm-hmm. Which, uh, by the way, just real quick, I just want to say this because it's semi-related. Bravo to the costume department. Yeah, seriously, all the armor, the weaponry, just and so cool. If it wasn't, if I already didn't know that it was going to be so expensive. I want Merlin's coat. Dude, right? 
Merlin's coach pretty awesome. That um, like robe cape thing yeah. with the hood that's a different color. Listen, our, our, look, you cannot call yourself a nerd unless you have at one point or another contemplated purchasing a cape. Like, I feel like that is a rite of passage for all of nerddom. But yeah, mm-hmm. um, back to Gawain. Like, Gawain, he, he's one of my he's always been one of my favorite characters. Um, even, even if, like, you know, dueling against both, well, both dueling against uh, Brian and facing him as a boss in FGO have kind of made me not like him as much. But, like, as a character, I've always liked Gawain, and he was pretty great. He was pretty great. Um, yeah, he was definitely a, like, um, kind of, like, male take on your favorite YA yeah. trope. He he felt very much like a like a Jon Snow character done right. Uh huh. Um, but I was also glad that he wasn't the main guy because otherwise, then like shit would just get done too easily. There wouldn't be that much conflict if people actually listened to Wayne. Yeah, and he wasn't, um, and he wasn't infallible. Um. Yeah, no, he made mistakes. Which, he made he, really cool. he, he made a lot of mistakes, which. Yeah, which made him a lot more endearing as a character as well. And, um, and also, but yeah, Wayne was pretty awesome, man. And also, um, if this gets a season two, which please, because that cliffhanger, oh my god! Yeah, and also, also, just just uh, to uh, to kind of piggy bank off of Brian, like talking about season two stuff, because uh, I think instead of having a speculation section, we'll just speculate about each character when right. we get, uh, like when we talk about each character. So yeah, speaking of speculation for season two. Um, Gwen's sword was broken. So, you know, Mm -hmm. when certain magic things happen towards the end there, he's gonna need a new sword. And he becomes like literal Green Knight. And you know what gives plants energy? Mm Mm-hmm. The sun. Mm-hmm. So Excalibur Galatine, Ga- or Galatine? I never know how to pronounce it. But you- Sun Sword, please, let's do it. That would be cool. I would be so hyped. Oh man. Yeah. Go- yeah. Like I said, Gwen is super cool. Like, I love that guy. Um. Yeah. But yeah. Oh, um, uh, and no. also, uh, since we're talking about like speculation and all that, uh, just to mm-hmm. rewind a bit, I'm feeling that if they do like a season two, two, it's gonna be similar to like season two of like the Last Airbender, where we get just s- side tangents of Squirrel and Lancelot. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's definitely. I think definitely season two will be a lot of Squirrel and Lancelot in the beginning because. We're not like, going to see them away for a few episodes. I well, think. I also feel like um, they're going to be like on their own, like on their own little adventure together, like Iroh and Zuko, or where, like the Hound and Arya, like kind of, kind of. You know, but for, it's just like, like a, uh, and little Squirrel Sass and Lancelot. <laughs> yep, and then Lancelot teaching Squirrel how to be a proper knight. I think that's going to be some pretty awesome stuff. Yeah, yeah, go back on Lancelot. Um, uh, also, just quick speculation on Cumber. Like I said, I think it's going to be very interesting to see kind of uh, Cumber's role in all this and uh, how things are going to end. Which, uh, by the way, heavy hand in that character that we didn't mention, which I like, which I really liked, is uh, the Red Spear. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't think he himself was the Red Spear. He was a member. I think the Red Spear was No, his plan. I'm talking about the lady. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, she's a member she of... She said, the I Red... am the Red Spear when she talked to Arthur. Yeah, uh, but the, the Red Spear is the clan. So she's the leader of the Red Spear. I know, so, but like, she also calls herself the Red Spear. Yeah, that's, yeah, because yeah, that's the title of the clan leader. Mm-hmm. But, um, I liked yeah, her. She's, yeah, she's pretty cool. And seeing her like slow her friendship is, so. with with Arthur and Penn. Yeah. 
Yeah. We don't know what her act, her real name is, so I'm kind of hoping that, uh, you know, I mean, I know, like, the whole Nimue Arthur thing is set up and all that, but, you know, if her name happens to start with a G, that would be pretty cool. Hmm. Just saying. Because they, they have some chemistry there. I wouldn't be opposed. Uh, especially if, uh, because this is medieval times, so you don't really have text messages and all that. So, uh, as far as Arthur knows, yeah, Nimue currently is in a dungeon. Yeah, or dead. And mm-hmm. or dead. Because, like, I, I actually think that Arthur would assume she's dead because, like, mm. they straight up betrayed them. Mm. Yeah, because they betrayed them. Remember? Mm. And they, like, arrow volleyed the ship. I don't know if this was said or not, but, uh, the Wikipedia, mm-hmm. which, um, I imagine that it goes on what is said in the show, so maybe we just missed it or not? Okay. But you know what the Wikipedia is telling me? What does the Wikipedia tell you, Brian? Red Spear's real name. Okay. Starts with a G. It does? Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, shit! Don't worry, uh, don't worry, Artie. Rancelot's not going to take her this time. Maybe. Which, uh, Who knows? Which, uh, funnily enough, the actress is uh, best known for, uh, she is best known for uh, playing Helen of Troy in a Troy in miniseries. The, it, wait. Oh, I was going to say, in that shitty Brad Pitt Troy movie? No, this was in a BBC Netflix miniseries. Oh, I gotta watch that. I like the Trojan War. That's pretty cool. Troy, Fall of a City. Is it on Netflix, like, now now? Yeah. Okay, cool. I'll have to look that up later. Interesting. Yeah, but she played Helen of Troy. Oh, that's pretty uh... dope. But yeah, that's cool. All right. Good job, Gwen. Major upgrade. Yep. And if they go the romance angle, I wouldn't be too. Yo, I'm I'm actually really happy about that because like I, I always hated that Guinevere was kind of just this passive woman who kind of just gets fawned over and doesn't really have her own agency. But I mean I guess that was just a product of the times. So that was cool. That's cool. I'm glad she's a badass like Viking warrior chick. And she gets to bond with Arthur over the fact that they both kick ass. Oh, that's, yeah, because there cool. definitely was a pause. Yeah, because, like, you know, especially, like, because, you know, uh, Arthur, she saved Arthur, and then Arthur returned the favor with the arrow, and they're like, you know, I owe you for that arrow. She goes, no, nah, I consider us even. And I'm just like, oh, oh, there's a little something here. There's a little something here. Yup. But, yeah, okay, so who do we want to go and to And I have a, and I actually do have a theory about, uh, uh, who else Nimue could end up with. Alright. Uh, yeah, go for it. Uh, Morgana. Hmm. That, that could be spicy. I like it. Because I thought I saw some, like, sparks between oh, that, them. Oh, yeah, yeah, there was definitely some sparks. Oh, yeah, you could, you saw that, like, very early on in, like, the Abbey type stuff, when they were in the, the Abbey. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. I could totally see that. Especially Which, because that would definitely be a, a definite power couple, depend especially considering where Morgana ended up. And it, and it actually also like so. This is a good transition into talking about Morgana. Um, I think this could be, actually be very interesting, um, considering the fact that again the show is called Cursed, and we already saw very early on that Nimue was cursed by the Demon Bear, which is why she has the Demon Bear claw marks on her back. And then, like, Morgana ended up getting cursed by the Widow. Mm-hmm. And so, um, we, they established very early on in their magic, with their magic system, that, like, love is kind of a power source for magic. So, it would kind of be very fitting if both, if the love that they share for each other, like, individually, 
breaks their uh, breaks their curses. So that could be it, cool. It could be. It's a little cheesy, but uh, you know, some cheesy stuff already happened. So like, it's not it's it's not like it's unprecedented. But yeah, Morgana is definitely a very interesting character. Which, uh, if you do know Arthurian legend, they actually like swerve you. Not entirely, right? So a lot of people only read the first part of Arthurian legend, where she's the bad guy who raises Mordred to kill his dad, which you know does happen. But you know, if you read towards the end. Uh, many years later, like, she actually feels really bad and, like, is really sorry and tries to heal Arthur and is actually one of the, one of the, uh, fey, uh, sorceresses who travel to Avalon to keep Arthur's body in a constant state of healing so that he will be ready, um, when the time comes where the future king is needed once again oh, by yeah, the world. that's right. I remember now that you said that, uh, but... Mm-hmm. But yeah, uh, she's one of three. Yep. And, uh, but still, she does some icky stuff, especially with her brother. And, uh, and, uh, this, this Morgana, they definitely do some things that make you think that she did. Yeah, and uh, and also like they make sure to establish very early on that like in other Arthurian legends that they're like half they are half siblings. They share the same dad, but they have a different mom. Which is why Morgana is fey blooded, and Arthur is purely human. As far as we know. But well, like I'm pretty well. Ar- well Arthur in all legends is not fey blooded. But I mean, well, I guess they could swerve us, but I don't think he well, is. You were the one who told me offline that you thought that maybe he might be because of how good he is with the sword. Well, yeah. So I, yeah. So like that—that that is what I said. That, that is what I said. But I, like thinking about it, like thematically with the show, right? He's import. Him being fully human is important to kind of like show the fae that not all humans are bad. So if if they made him a fae fae blooded. That would kind of like take away from his whole. I get oh you. yeah, oh yeah. So he's he, there's a reason he's a good guy because he has fake blood too. Hashtag not all humans. Exactly. So like <laughs> that's that's why I think, you know. I get you. Not, I know. Not... I get it. But, but yeah, Morgana though, because they introduce her at first, and she's a nun. Yep, she's uh, she's a nun at an abbey. Um. And she takes the name Yvain, actually, um, because uh, she's trying to hide the fact that she is the, like, the daughter of the, well, the niece of the lord of the, the country that he's in. Well, also, people just kept calling her that at the beginning, and she just, because it was her grandmother's name? No, it was her mother. It was her, with it? Yeah, yeah, it was her grandmother's name. Yeah, which is pretty cool. Um, also, like, fun fact... Again, just, just I'm just gonna keep sprinkling Arthurian fun facts. Uh, Yvain is also a really cool knight. Um, she's obviously a member of the Pendragon family, and uh, the whole reason that the the English monarchy has a lion as one of its symbols is because in the legend with Yvain, her battle companion is a lion. And also, I can give you a fun fact, people. Evane is also an obscure but still cool DC comic character. And it's actually the Evane who was magically, like, Captain Americanized and brought into modern time and becomes the second hero to go under the moniker of Shining Knight. Which makes sense because Shining Knights like are members of the Pendragon family of the DC universe, and uh, she's a member of the Seven Soldiers of Victory. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, so but we only got like twenty minutes left. So. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, Morgana, real quick, back to Morgana. So yeah, she starts off as a nun, and like we actually see that she we see pretty early on that she's very blooded too because she can also hear the voices of the hidden, 
and that means she, and also because she can hear the voices of the hidden, that means she's like exceptionally strong in fey magic because only people like Nimue and her mom are actually able to actively hear the hidden voices. Um, so like that was pretty cool early on. We also find out that, like you said before, she's gay. She has a lover within the abbey who we assume might also be part fey as well because she says the whole chant and greeting. But maybe that was just to respect her girlfriend's culture or whatever. Um, yeah, and uh, she also knew all the fey ingredients that Nimue wanted to use with healing the guy. Mm-hmm. And she so, knew yeah. that they were fey. Yeah, so there's, yeah, so there's but, that. Uh, then, but then in a scene where she has to go retrieve the sword in a dark cave. She runs into her lover out of nowhere, and it's just like, okay, this is suspicious. And then it just, and then it turns out, yeah, no, that wasn't actually her mother, her lover. That was the the widow in disguise, and now she's possessed because you see a scary spider crawl into her eye as she's in a. It trance. wasn't the widow. It was a different creature. Oh yeah, some kind of well, one of the dark gods, one of the dark gods. Yeah, the widow was trying to stop her. Yeah. Mhm. But. But yeah, but yeah, so, so that, so that's that's what happens to Morrigan. Oh. And uh, we think, oh God, she's gonna become the B B E G, and uh, she's gonna be like the real big bad and gonna get real evil and magicy. There's yep. even a scene towards the end where we both wrote in our text to each other, God damn it, Nimue, where Nimue gives her the sword. Yep. And we think, oh, what God, this is going to be the end all be all, but... No, she's, she's good. She, 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 they swerved us. When, no, she... when, the, when the lover tells her that, that Nimue's time is up, that Nimue's going to die, she's like, nope. I'm not letting up. that... I'm not letting that happen. And then when the widow tries to kill her, yep, she kills the widow and effectively becomes the Grim Reaper? <laughs> Question mark. Mm-hmm. Which, uh, by the way, we never saw it, but uh, I wonder if the way that she killed her also had a thing to do with it because she obviously killed her with the sword. Yeah, and okay, so and that's another thing, right? I, and I wanted to talk about this. So we know that the sword has a direct connection to the hidden, and like I, they said, like Nimue alludes to the fact that like they're probably trapped in the. So what if Morgana like absorbed the widow into the sword hmm. by killing her? Like that, that's just a thought. Maybe, but uh, we need to move Maybe. on because we're short yeah. For time. Yeah, yeah, we only got ninety, yeah, ninety minute time limit. Right, right. Yeah, so. Uh, let's go to the boy himself, the once and future king, Arthur, or uh, uh, King Obama, <laughs> King King Barack. Yep. Uh, yeah. It's good. So the reason I say that is because uh, if you watch the Netflix Obama uh, biopic, uh, that is young Barack. Um, mm-hmm. Uh, which you know, that's a good that's a good movie. You should definitely check that out. It's pretty fun. Um. But yeah, uh, he was really cool. Um, I liked that he was like kind. He's he's the type of character that I love to play in RPGs. Bit of an asshole, like pretty funny, um, but also loves to hit things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, that, that's like that's that's my favorite type of character to play in an RPG. And uh, yeah, Arthur, Arthur is definitely a, uh, like a fun guy. Um. He obviously had his, like, you know, scummy moments, you know, stealing the sword and all that. Um, but he has some good, genuine growth, and he does seem like a really, really good guy, like, at the end of the day. And he's got his own demons dealing with his, like... Oh, man, like, just that once the, the scene that he had with Morgana, where he, like, steals his guts about how he feels about his dad and why he has that, like, almost Zuko-level obsession with honor... Uh, mm-hmm. Oh my god, that was so good. That's probably my favorite it, scene he was in. It was, and to see like the the asshole moment that his 
his father gave him, like, all my deaths are now yours. Yep, and all all he was left with was like a sword and a small like a small pile of silver. And uh, that's why Morgana was sent to the monastery because she was sold. Yep. Mm-hmm. So yeah, and he was twelve years old yeah. with all this debt. Yeah, and like, and so she start, she tries to yell at him, like rightfully so, and she's like, "What the fuck, man? Why didn't you try and stop them? Why didn't you try and save me?" And he goes. Well, what the fuck was I supposed to do? I was 12. Yeah, um, but, but yeah, so, uh, yeah, he, his story is pretty cool, and he's really good with a sword. Oh, yeah, like, he, his action is pretty great, and again, I just love, going back to it, I love his tag team with Guinevere. It's pretty fucking awesome. Yeah, like, we clearly see that, uh, in the show, as far as the show goes, he is the human with the biggest body bag, like the he- biggest body count. Body yeah. count. Mm-hmm. That's for sure. And like, he's also not flawless either. He also he gets equally as fucked up as he does the fucking up. If that makes sense. Mm-hmm. And like his back and forth with uh, with Gwen and yeah. uh, yeah. it, uh, him I, I, killing that dude. Yeah. Um, like uh, I, I, I like that he had a struggle with the big barbarian guy. Like he needed Gwen's help to finish the, finish him off. Also, I, I, I did get a little bit of satisfaction seeing Lancelot kick the shit out of him. Yeah, but uh, we're running really low on time, so why don't we talk about the main chick herself? Yeah, so let's talk about Nimue, and uh, like this also we can obviously because he's heavily tied to her, Merlin. So uh-huh. Nimue. She's pretty great, man. Catherine Langford does a bang up job. I I really enjoyed her. Um, they definitely went the Katniss route with Nimue, but also she doesn't feel like a kind of forced "look at me, I'm a badass woman" type of hero. She's super reluctant about it, and um. Like, the only time she's good, for real, is, like, as she learns to use her power and use it properly. I also do like that, like, with Nimue, they kind of, like, turn Excalibur kind of into a one-ring type situation. Uh Where, like, it has so much power that, like, it corrupts whoever uses it for too long. Uh, And and that's what happened to Merlin and such like that. And because of that, uh, it also makes her a fallible character. Well, she'll make like these brash decisions and all mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. and uh then immediately regret it yeah and her, <laughs> and her bad decisions actually have consequences like which is a thing that a lot of these like the, these like ya stories with female characters tend to not have right like it, the situations tend to fix themselves now when nimoy fucks up it's pretty bad i kind of feel like this is somewhat what they were trying to go with with Danny in season eight, in season seven, kinda, but uh, yeah, I, I, this I, was done better. I could, yeah, I could definitely see that. Um, this was done a lot better, yeah, and uh, and the, there's not a, like a sudden swerve like what happened with Danny, but yeah, Nimoy is pretty great. Um, I I do, uh, I, I'm actually glad they went the way they did with uh, Nimoy's relationship with Merlin because uh. You know, in Arthurian legend, Nimue and Merlin are usually, um, they even did this in Once Upon a Time, they're usually lovers, right? And um, Merlin, because Merlin's a fuckboy and a deceiver, uh, because he breaks Nimue's heart, Nimue traps Merlin in the Tower of Avalon, and because of that, Merlin is not able to stop Arthur from um, getting killed by Mordred. So, yeah, the, like, I'm glad they went with the father-daughter route, which I should have seen coming. Um, uh, with the fact that they made her mother his lover. Mm-hmm. Which I, I thought was really well done. Um, and Merlin's actor is great. Um, I've always hated the, uh, like, the modern pop culture interpretations of Merlin that make him this, like, wise, sage, holy good figure. I love, like, in the Merlin TV show and Merlin from Fate 
or this Merlin, or Merlin is kind of an asshole and a fuckboy. Or um, also uh, Merlin from Once Upon a Time. Oh, yeah, Merlin from Once Upon a Time as well. Yeah. Like, it's all because he's supposed to be kind of just a, a skeevy dude. Like, and that's what he is. And, like, his character growth is pretty solid, too. Like, obviously, he does more fucking up than actual good decisions. But, dude, mm-hmm. uh, and, like, the whole time he's completely depowered because, like, he put most of his power into Excalibur, even though it's never called that at all in the show. Um, Just called the sword. And, yeah. uh, like, literally, he traps the sword inside of him, which uh, isn't a euphemism. Yeah, it, and, was, uh, it, was, it was pretty badass with, uh, when um, Nimue's mom just pulls it out of there and it starts glowing and shit, and she's just like, whoa. Um, but yeah, uh, when he does get his power back, boy. <laughs> boy. Although, yeah, it it's like, a, it definitely kind of gives me vibes of Ragnarok when Thor really yeah when he got when, when, yeah when Thor got the uh, when he got the Thor force oh yeah, no, yeah that was that was essentially what happened like Merlin got got unlocked and it was pretty which uh, I hate to say this but part of me theorizes that uh, maybe in season two Nimoy is gonna have to stop him because he's corrupted by the sword. By the sword, yeah, no, that that's likely gonna happen, and she's gonna. Uh, they're probably gonna do the tragedy where she has to kill him, blah 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 blah, um, and like he serves as. Uh, he'll probably get like a forest ghost treatment or something like that, um, somewhere down the line. Well, if- ooh, ooh, um, Morgana, mm-hmm. with the, like the seeing the dead and all that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You could you could get like a whole force ghost treatment, so you could have Merlin, but also like kill him so he doesn't like go too far. Um, yeah. But yeah. So um, we are down to like nine minutes. So any final thoughts? Well, uh, Nimue herself, I really liked. Also, one character that we didn't get to go into detail, but I really liked her is a uh, Nimue's best friend. Yeah, Pim is awesome. Pim was pretty funny. I liked her side adventure with the the Red Fear crew and the Vikings and stuff. And uh, uh, she's the one that I wonder if they're ever going to, like, say that she has magic, because she's definitely fey-blooded. Yeah, but, but, like, she hasn't shown any signs. Yeah. But she's actually... And we definitely very... know that her magic isn't healing. Yeah, and... she's, but she's actually a pretty good, like, her regular-ass herbal healer, so that's pretty interesting. She's decent. That was the joke, was mm-hmm. she was better than anyone that they had so far, but she was a shit healer. Yeah. That's what the Red uh-huh. Spear said. Yeah. But... But yeah, I really like this show. It's really, it's really like. Yeah, I I think just real quick. I think I think what her power is going to end up being. She's going to be a weapon forger, um, and she's going to be one of her because you know there there are three sorceresses of Avalon. There's Morgana, there's Nimue, and then there's an unnamed third. She's probably unnamed third. Oh, and she's that... going to probably. That would be really cool, and I'd love to see that, especially with, like, her little stuff, like her reaction to finding out that Merlin is, is Nimue's yeah. dad. Yeah, so, yeah, two minutes, two minutes, holy shit, holy shit. Um, so, uh, seven, six, six and a half. But, uh, uh, it, anyway. It says, it says 80, oh yeah, 83, now, I thought that said 88, my bad, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, um... Overall, show's pretty great. Uh, if you love Arthurian Legend, you're going to love this show. Uh, if you don't, um, but you like fantasy, you'll like this show. Um, if you like good acting. Because there is legit yeah. a episode where it's basically just just uh, Catherine Langford and the Scars guy, guy like acting off each other, and it's awesome. Yeah. If if you like if you like good acting and you're and you're okay with slow burn shows, you'll like this show. Mm-hmm. Um, highly recommend it. But yeah, yes, let's and go into Please, please, time. please, season two. Yeah, give it, a, give it a season two, please. Please, Netflix. We need it. We need it. It's great. But yeah, plug time. Special time of the night where we get to tell you guys what is coming up on our various social media platforms. For Brian, it is YouTube. For me, it is Blair and Twitch. And well, technically me, I, YouTube. I will quickly say that um, I actually recorded a review for it this week, so I will try to get out of it. Uh, outhouse for you, and then uh, and then uh, Sunday of recording this, uh, 
Winona Earp. Woohoo! Yep. And for me, except I'm probably gonna put my Owl House review out tomorrow, um, and then Winona as well tomorrow night. So that's gonna be exciting. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I'm probably gonna do mine like midday tomorrow for Owl House, and then later in the day for yep. Winona. Yep. And uh, yeah, same for me, pretty much. Uh, and all you know, usual stuff. My if you like my SEO content, uh, like I will, I post clips on my YouTube channel, Mr. J. Saldea. Which I'm only going to do for new events because that seems to be the ones that people actually check out. And I'm also going to post my roll strings and stuff. Um, and then, you know, uh, my I Twitch, I, I go on Twitch pretty much daily around like 3 or 4 Eastern Standard Time. Definitely pop in and say hi. We just kind of chat it up as I play video games. That's a lot of fun. So, yeah. Um, next week, we will actually be doing a San Diego Comic Con special because they did a, like, on live version. Brian is going to be collecting the news and he will be kind of running the show, and we'll be kind of reacting back and forth to the TV-related news out of San Diego Comic-Con this year. You guys will uh, be around for that and enjoy that. But until next time, we bid you farewell, fair ladies and gentlemen. Peace. Peace.